Hey YouTube, we're really excited. I know it's been a really long time since we had a video. I think we're about three to four weeks now, right Chase? Yes. Yeah, it's been rough. But the cool news is we have some really awesome snakes that have hatched. We've been trying to keep up with all of them and keeping up with shipping snakes to you guys and all the customers, it's been awesome. And now we have some really, really cool things to show you. This week we have the confusion gene. I have teased this gene several times. We even shown a couple of them and then said, we're gonna explain this gene more later. Well, this is the video that we're gonna do it, and we get to kind of show you the whole synopsis. You know, when it comes to a new gene, I don't wanna always be like, oh, this, this is a cool thing. I wanna kind of explain the history of it, what can be done, and then look at the combos and give you guys an idea of what maybe you could do with it or where it might be going next so you can have all the information. But we're really excited to get into that today. So the confusions are just a really awesome, incomplete dominant mutation, which means you can breed it to any other mutation out there and the gene will show up in the clutch. It's not going to be like a recessive where you have to have it in both parents in order to make it. Um, so just from the very beginning, I want to be clear that the, so far as we know, the confusion and the acid and the static genes appear to be the same. That's three different names and three different origins for these mutations, and they've all kind of come to the market at the same time. Um, as far as we know, the combos seem to be extremely similar, and I'm not aware of any difference. Today, I'm going to be talking about the confusions because that's what I'm working with, but as far as I know, there is no difference between these two different mutations. Okay, so the confusion was actually originated in Europe. Um, and it started out with an awesome guy, Austrian Reptiles, um, and he's just a really cool guy. He did a lot with it initially, but initially it had a little bit of a hard time in the market. I remember when I first saw them, it was actually a show in Tinley Park, and I thought, man, this is awful similar to a leopard. And the timing of it was such that the leopard was still a pretty big deal back then. It wasn't like it is now where it's fairly common. And I was thinking, ah, oh, it's very similar to the leopard. Is it worth an extra price tag? Is it worth, you know, the unknown part of it? But since then, what's happened is the leopard has become a huge, huge staple of the industry, and the confusion has kind of slowly developed, and now we're starting to see that the confusion is actually not that similar to the leopard. And so it's not even really important to talk about the leopard as part of it, but I wanted to bring it up just to help you understand kind of the context of the gene. It is a dark, basically a pattern mutation, and so therefore it's automatically gonna be compared to the leopard because that's our, that's our big kind of giant in the industry right now. But we're gonna draw, as we talk, talk about these snakes, and as we look at these snakes, we're gonna draw some points of contrast just to show you what different things can be done and how, in a lot of ways, it's not similar at all. So to start off, we're gonna look at a couple confusions just to see the natural variation of the gene. And that's so important, because with any gene, Sometimes the first ones that are shown and they'll be shown off, people will think, okay, if mine doesn't look just like that, it must be something different. But this is a real dark, nice version of the confusion. It's got that kind of granity look to it. A lot of them have that. Some really cool bandits, some crazy pattern. You can see that's not your typical alien heads for a ball python at all. It's a very, very unique pattern. So they have very dramatic coloration, nice and darks. I'm scaring them a little bit here. <laughs> nice and dark um, blacks um, with a really, really nice contrast with the rest of the pattern. Their heads tend to have this really, really deep, rich color to them. Kind of wide eye stripes, low, kind of low set, wide eye stripes, a little bit of a, not a head stamp so much as a light spot on top of the head. One of the big things that will help ID these and it's one of the most unique features of them, a couple that I'm gonna point out. First one is that face. You see there they have a lot of black flecking and spotting in the um, heat pits in the nostril area there and that's a really unique feature that you'll find in confusions. The other thing is is they have like an eye stripe that runs in. This is very this isn't all ball pythons. 
It runs in up, down here, right underneath the eye. But on the confusion, what you'll see a lot of times is that spot will continue right on to the other side of the eye. See that? See that spot right there? He doesn't want me to point to it. That spot right there on the other side of the eye where that, that stripe continues on underneath the eye. That's something that confusions have that's really, really cool and really unique. Um, and you see it to different extents, but that's a real prominent one. Sometimes you'll see it real faded on the other side, but it's really cool. And the last and biggest awesome feature of confusions is the crazy, crazy belly. They have a really, really unique and amazing belly. Okay, so this is another variation of the confusion then. This one may be even more common as far as the look goes. You see the color is more orange, more deep in the pattern, but it still has that really dramatic black mixed with the really good contrast in the brown. Again, that crazy, crazy belly, but this one is a little bit, the, the pattern's pushed to the outside just a little bit more than the other but still not even a typical belly. Okay, so now we're gonna look at two of the more common variations of combos that we're likely to find. So these yellow belly and pastel are two of the bedrock genes in ball pythons. And so I wanna show you how in confusion interacts with those two. So this is a yellow belly confusion and this combo right here excited me more about the project um, than about any other because Although the confusion is really cool and unique, it also looks very leopard-like. Um, and the yellow belly confusion was what showed me that it's definitely very, very different than the leopard. Because a leopard yellow belly is very, very subtle. Sometimes it's hard to even tell if you have a leopard yellow belly. But a yellow belly confusion actually really enhances the yellow belly. Look at that pattern. It makes that yellow belly belly way, way more extreme and gives it a really insanely awesome look. So the pastel does a really good job of translating the confusion pattern straight over. Um, and what it tends to do with the pastel is give a striping along the back that has just full of these bubbles. And it just gives it a really, really neat, almost like calligraphy look there at the top. Again, the pattern really, really translates to the belly. Look at that crazy belly. So even on a pastel, that looks really, really, really neat. So these next couple combos really highlight the unique interaction that confusion gives. Um, so this is a fire spot nose confusion. And it's, when I saw this animal, I was like, wow, that is really, really cool. Um, so the confusion project goes extremely well with spot nose. Um, it interacts just very, very strongly, similar to the way leopard does, just the spot nose in it. They're both heavy pattern morphs, and so they combine and stack in a really unique way. Next one is a pastel GHI confusion. And the crazy thing is that this animal is so dark and dramatic that it'd be hard to even know there's pastel in there. You can see it in the head. When it hatched, I was like, wow, how can it be that dark, even with pastel? But the mom was a super pastel, so it had to be. And it's really neat to see this animal kind of grow. You see here from the pastel, we still have a little of that bubbling look here on the top, really unique. You have the GHI kind of um, speckling in the alien heads, but the confusion has taken the alien heads and drawn them far apart. And again, a crazy belly, love those bellies. Okay, we're gonna hit you hard here with four of my favorite combos of the year now that we've set up kind of what this gene can do. This is a leopard confusion and this hatched early, early in 2018. And I love this combo so much because the leopard has a crazy belly. Sometimes the confusion has an insanely crazy belly and together it makes the craziest belly I have ever seen on a ball python. That is just absolutely wild. And the cool thing is, is that you can see both of those genes interacting really, really cool in this snake. It's got that leopard kind of blackness and darkness and craziness, and then confusion just comes right over the top of that and makes the pattern really blow up into this weird spider webbing and just, they interact in such a really, really unique way. All right, next one up is a firefly yellow belly confusion and it just took and really blew up the pattern on this too. So I, I don't even know what to say about a snake like this. The color is really, really, really incredible. And what I like, you know, as many of you know, so for so many years here, I've been trying to 
really make my combinations more dramatic, more deep, more dark, more um, contrast between the brights and the darks. And there's so much going on with the snake, but what I love about it is every part of the snake really highlights both the blacks and the brights. So taking this snake and adding one more gene, this is the pinstripe firefly yellow belly confusion. And pretty much these have all been girls and that's been kind of cool to be able to put some of these back on the shelf for the future to see where this gene takes us. But the cool thing about this is that it has such great contrast. Pretty much whenever you're trying to achieve this sort of look with a leopard, any kind of leopard lemon blast, you lose all of this pattern. It just fades out to this really light gray. And so you really don't get to enjoy this almost cheetah pattern that comes from this. And the last one I have to show you, you know me, I love everything with red stripe. Red stripe is my current kind of muse in ball pythons. And this is the pastel yellow belly red stripe confusion. And it turned out so cool because they have the orange kind of from the red. Pastel and yellow belly and red stripe together, those, those, that combination makes so much kind of orangey sides and spreads out the pattern so much. It's really cool to see how confusion takes and makes that pattern so much more wicked, so much more wild. Um, the combination of all these genes together just is incredibly cool. Again, another, another really cool girl to add to the collection. Hope you guys enjoyed those animals as much as we do. It's a really insanely awesome mutation and there's just so much to be done. Really, we've not seen it yet with any of the major recessives. And so I'm really excited to start plugging those in and seeing all the different combinations. I'm really excited by these combos that we showed you today. So one of the first questions anybody has about a new mutation, including me, is, is there a super form? What does it look like? Is it gonna be a big boost when you get a super? Um, so as many of you know, I actually did a little announcement earlier in the year that I actually had a clutch from confusion to confusion, decided to give it a shot, see what comes of it, and I'm actually aware of two other clutches in the world as well that have confirmed the same thing, which is that it does not appear to have a visual super that's different. So that means that although there, there might be a super form in the clutch, it doesn't visually look different enough from a standard confusion to be able to be really clear about which one it is. Theoretically, 25% of a confusion to confusion clutch would be supers, and when you breed it, all of its offspring would be confusion, um, but we're just not really sure at this stage from those babies which ones that might be. Um, there's a lot of variation in the clutch, and we might find later on that, that there's something to look for, but right now there's no obvious different super. So I just wanna put that to rest. Get some information out there and we'll see if future clutches continues to bear that information out but i hope you guys really enjoyed this video thanks so much for watching i appreciate every one of you we are so close to 25,000 subscribers chase i was thinking we're like what 50 something short right yeah, now we're super close so help us out if you're not subscribed just hit that button at the end of the video it means so much to us um, miguel from always evolving has now passed us which uh this is a little bit of a competition see if you can help us out here a little bit we appreciate it so much. Have a good day.